Dave here, how are you? Um, today is the 16th of May 2021. I'm hoping the stream is coming through. Uh, Peter, if you can let me know, that'd be great. Um, AV, all good. Thank you very much for that. All right, today on the show, we're going to finish off the battery charging station. You notice you can't see it here at the moment. Some people have noticed that uh, on a video I released yesterday on the TSO products Bigfoot, that uh, it was in the background. Uh, bad move on my <laughs> behalf. So today, basically, we're going to cut a strip off this plywood sheet. I'm not going to be using the table saw. I'm going to use the track saw and the 2.7 meter rail. <clears throat> um, the reason being, I only want to cut something around about four inches wide, 100 millimeters wide, and I don't want to fight with that on the table saw. So it's a whole lot easier here. Now, the reason I'm using this piece of ply, this is a piece of marine ply. This is not um, birch. It's not the real expensive stuff uh, because this one has actually got a big cup in it. Now, it's not one of these cups, it's a cup. So it's when one side of the board has absorbed moisture, the other side hasn't, you'll get this kind of arch along the board. It's not a bow or a twist like a propeller, it's called a cup. Ordinarily, ordinarily you can fix that by just applying a lot of heat to one side to dry it out, and that will make the board go straight again. But on this situation with plywood, I think it was actually in the manufacturing process that they used different moisture content as they were gluing it together. That's just my take on it. It may not be true, so don't quote me. Anyway, it's useless for what I normally make my Stanton benches out of, so I will be cutting off that. So we're going to create the, the mating piece for the French cleat, which will go on the wall, and then we'll get the uh, battery charging station up here on the bench, do a little bit of uh, finish off work to it, not a lot, and then we'll pop it up there. And at the end of the show, I'm going to show you how I actually turn the whole thing on and off again. And that's going to be a bit of fun. It was a bit of an eye-opener for me during the week when I worked all this stuff out. And so we have all these people saying, um, hi, I'm just going to say an overall, g'day, how are you all? <laughs> Dave here, how are you? That's what I say at the beginning of the show. I better do the social media thing because Peter will say to me, Dave, you haven't done that. Um, do this look at that and it says I don't recognize you of course it doesn't and give me a second there we go done you'll be getting a post pretty soon if you're on Facebook Wayne good morning oh the quick thing about uh, the after the show today we normally have a patrons chat after the show my granddaughter is having her birthday party today and it's at half past 12 the show finishes at 12 it's a half hour drive to where she's at. I have to close things off here. So I really don't have time this afternoon to be able to incorporate the after chat and the birthday party. And you know what? My granddaughter takes precedent. I'm, so, I'm sorry. All right, Paul, how are you? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is rip this and I'll show you a couple of things about what I'm gonna do with this. This board is not as long as the bench that I've got it sat on or the sacrificial door that I use underneath the track saw. So what I'm going to do is use the parallel guides as a holder, as a clamp. And it'll be tricky. Family first. Thanks. Um, I'll switch cameras to this one and show you what I mean. Walk in front of the camera. Now, up the end here, I've already set the, the length that I want. I need around about four inches of this cleat. I'm going to do a 45 degree cut back under the track because I can't do it away from the track. So these things you need to be aware of when you're working out the size of your cleat uh, and to put it on the wall. And there's a couple of other things I'll show you in a minute, but I need my specs and we'll throw the other parallel guide on and I'll show you also why I'm doing these things. So this parallel guide I've got set to 
1120 millimeters, which will be from this side to the actual top of the 45. Remember, it's coming back. So that was 1120. I'll get my other parallel guide out of here. And I've already got, this is a sexy thing. I'll bring it up close so you can see it. This guy here is the parallel guide track adapter. And this one you'll notice there's nothing on the inside here. This one is designed for Festool tracks. There's a couple of very, very small nylon bushes in there, bumpers, and they, I'll see if I can get it around this way, they're adjusted by grub screws on the back. Very, very sexy addition, but unfortunately can't be used with the Makita track or the Triton track. Now, the reason being, they, the back of their tracks are slightly different here. So the back of the Makita track has got a 45 degree or a little lip on it. So if you've got the saw over at 45 degrees, the saw can't roll. I find that that tends to have a tendency to twist the track. I'd rather have my hand down on the base of the saw as I'm pushing it through. But that's just a by the by. It was 1120, so we'll set the stop down to 1120, which is right there. Lock that, push that down. This is where the magic happens. I'm going to sit that there. And the reason I'm going right to the end is because I want to make sure that I've got enough room to put a clamp over the back of the parallel guide right there. So I'm going to lock this one on. And it's just a matter of a push down. How easy is that? Okay, so that's down. That's down. I just push up in the center. And it's parallel to the back. So when I finish this cut, I'll have the, it'll still be parallel if I want to make another cut further down the track. If I wanted to do a few French cleats, I could just bring this back 100 mil and do a straight cut. It works, you know, it just makes life easy. Okay, so we've got all that. The other important thing is to leave enough of your sacrificial board underneath so that it's not going to fall off onto the ground when you finish the cut. Okay, now, some people may have seen on Facebook during the week that all of my clamps are now hanging off the end of my bench. So I've come in possibly 75 mil. I'm gonna lock the track there. This is instead of clamping the actual track itself. I'm getting the parallel guides to act as the clamp to lock it in position so it won't move. And then this one. There as well. Not going anywhere. See that? It can't. These little things, I just think about them as I'm going along and think, you know what, why not? All right, the saw. I'm going to flip over to 45 degrees. If you don't have a table saw, get yourself something like this. Yeah, 45 is there. And on the back, lock that as well. I've got a Bluetooth battery in here, so I've connected it to the dust extractor, so it'll turn on automatically. And the depth I want to go to, I will just check first before I actually run it. I'm not going to turn the saw on. I'm just, there's a little button at the top here. I'll show you. See this guy here, if you push that forwards, that'll let you drop the saw down with actual, without actually turning it on. The switch under here is the one that turns it on. So I'm going to just check that I've got enough depth there, allowing, of course, for the fact that I've got... A bit of a bit of the um, the track to support as well. So I'm going to go down a little bit deeper, 32, and let's see how that's looking. That's through plenty. Excellent. Okay, I'll put the uh, earphones on. Oh, the eye muffs. The eye muffs. I'll come over here for a quick read of what's happening. 
Um, oh, and my girl's watching as well. Hi, baby. The picture framing factory. Good on you. <laughs> Jeremy's gone mad. He's found some photos and he's thought, you know what? I'm going to frame them all. Now, so it doesn't catch down there, I'm going to put my arm around here. So it's basically going to hold the, the hose out this way. I could have used the dust bag. Maybe I should have. But anyway, here we go. We'll do the cut. Now, when I said I hit something in there, I may not have. What might have happened? It might have been part of my sacrificial door underneath. That should come off now. There it is. Cool. It may have been, because I cross-cut and this way and all over, maybe one of these pieces had come loose and just got twisted as I went along. So I will move this to here and I may roll this out of the way lift that and lift the other end having things mobile in the workshop is a godsend I have all of this area all of this everything here from behind where I talk all the time and my bench where I have the standing bench, everything from there back is all on wheels. The bench, the lathe cart, the bandsaw, the drill press, all of those machines over there, everything is on wheels. I can wheel them out, to the, out in the garage and I've got this huge area here as an assembly space. And it's brilliant, I love it. All right, back to the main camera. All right, so we have this is the receiving section of the French cleat. So it's a 45 degree cut and that board is now, I think it's 1.6, maybe 1.7 long out of a 2.4. I've got to mount this to the wall. Now, remember the other week I said, don't mount this side to the wall because the bench would just go, Phew. sorry, not the bench, the uh, charging station would just go slip. So we need to mount it this way around. So the wall is going to be on this side and the charging station is going to drop on that side. I will spin this around so we can see what's happening. Yeah, about there, I think. Let me have a look at what's happening with the other camera. Oh, that's a bit wonky. That'll do me just there. All right, I have a quick read. Um, on holiday watching from Darwin, are you, Ron? That's keen. Um, and people are saying hello to my girl. A quick drink. All right. Well, it's going to look a little bit dark over there. I don't know why, but we'll see what happens. Here, going to switch the cameras. Right, 
this over here is where I'm going to put the French clip. You can see I've drawn on the top a line here that says top of unit. And I find doing this makes life a little bit easier as I'm going along. I've, I've always had this problem where I've measured to the wrong point on the French cleat and the whole job's going to be lower or taller than I actually wanted it to be by that, by that thickness of the material, by 20 mil or 18 millimeters. What I've also done is I've gone along and I've put marks where I know the studs are. Now, I normally just tap So I know where the stud is there because it's a much more solid sound as I was tapping. But also I'm cheating because the soft sheet nails <laughs> are right there from when I built the place. So I can see I've got a soft sheet nail. There's another soft sheet nail there. I'm going to not go all the way with the connection here. This piece is only 1.6. So I'm going to bring it by turning this around this way a little bit further. I'm going to bring it down so it's half on this stud here because if I want to put another cleat to keep on going along that wall further down the track, I've got an anchoring point so I'll have half and half on that stud. So these studs are 50 millimeters wide, two inches wide. Uh, so I'll come on to that by, we'll just go to the center. Next thing to do is to drill some holes, actually put the, put the piece up here and get a pencil and spin that back just a little about there i'm going to put this up against the wall got a couple of things in the way but that's all right and i nearly did it <laughs> the mark that i have there is bottom of cleat You've got to have your wits about you or just be a bit younger than I am. So I'm, I'm going to line it up with the center there, which, which is pretty good. Yep, that's where it's going to be. Uh, right, there's a stud here. And a stud. This is always easier with two people doing this. There. Come, come up a little so I can see them all. That's better. All right. We've got a stud here. A stud here. Mark that one off. And keeping pressure against the piece. A stud here. All good. I'm going to drill two holes in each of these, you know, at all of these points. So I'll bring it back to the other camera. I could have measured it and it probably would have been easier, but not to worry. Uh, Vinny, hi all. Kiri, you can use magnets to find screws, nails, and drywall. Yep, that's also a good way of doing it. Uh, where are we? Drill. So I'm just going to do a countersink and look, let's use a square. Otherwise people will accuse me of being a butcher. How are we doing for time? 20 past. Yeah, so if you don't have a table saw, Get yourself something like that. All right, I'm going to drill some holes. Just two in each one. Easy, isn't it? Let's go to Carl Cam. Mm, right over that one will be fine. And this one. It's 
spin her around. And this here is where I'm going to be doing the joint. So I'm coming in around about 3 eighths of an inch, 10 mil or so. In your jammies again. Do you know anyone else who goes shopping in her pajamas? <laughs> Vicky buys very nice pajamas. <laughs> of course, then she goes shopping in them. Anyway, I'm curious to see if anyone else knows of anyone that does that as well. Telling tales out of school, aren't I? All right. What I'll do now is take this over and I'm going to put one screw in in the middle where are the screws here. Now, a rule of thumb with screws is whatever the thickness of the material is, you make it twice the length. So, but it's always online. <laughs> Good answer, John. So that's for going into cross grain. If I'm going into end grain, whatever the thickness of the material is, I go twice as deep into the end grain. So if it's half an inch thick, I'm going into end grain, I'm securing a piece of cross grain to a piece of end grain, I will use a one and a half inch screw. Um, <laughs> she's fine with that. Uh, so 20 millimeters, close enough, it would be close enough to a 60 millimeter screw going into end grain. Going into another piece of 20 mil, it'll be a 40 mil. Just something left over from my apprenticeship that I thought I'd share with you guys. All right, let's go back over there to there and see what we're doing. Screwdriver drill. Back up to there. And I need, this is the bottom of the, Mark, so I'm going to just get in everyone's way there for a minute. I'll put a screw in here. Gotcha. All right. That should work. Now, also, the other thing you've got to do is make sure that you've left enough room above what you're putting the cleat on or what, you, what you're using the French cleat system for, so that you're not going to be kind of stopped from putting it over there. Remember, you, you've got to have clearance of around 20 millimeters if you're using, or three quarters of an inch above if you're using three quarter inch material. This is 18 millimeter, so I need at least 80 millimeters above 18 millimeters, not 80. Um, all right, now you can see it's so slowly sagging. What I could have done is measured the thickness from the bottom of that 45 to the base of the board and worked off my line and put another line along underneath. And that's probably a more sensible thing to do, but this is gonna get me out of strife. I'm gonna slide this up until it's in line properly. Come in closer so I can see what's happening. There it is there. And we'll put another screw in here. Gotcha. And I'll do a quick check with the level to make sure it's all good. Because it'll bug me if it's not. The other thing, of course, is you can just throw a level on it while you're doing all this stuff. Let's move that guy out of the way. That out of the way, and that out of the way. <sighs> I gotta show you. That'll do me. <laughs> All right, I'm happy with that. A little bit of free advertising for Jeremy there with a Stanley Fat Max level. 
Not that he gave it to me, I bought that. <laughs> All right, let's keep on throwing some more screws in. Now you may be aware that last week I said there's only going to be four kilos of weight on this thing. Well, that was a big pork pie. Because the charge, the unit itself is three-quarter ply. The charges, not so heavy, but the batteries are basically solid metal. There's a truckload of weight in it. <laughs> so I'm, that's why I'm putting the extra screws in. It's not going to go anywhere. It really isn't. But I would hate for it to fall off the wall. great little drill this thing. I've had it for seven years. Unbelievably strong. You'll see excess. All right, let's now come back to this again. Okay, yeah, that's uh, it's gone well. All right, now I'm going to bring the battery charger up here so you can have a look at it. I'm going to go through a few different things about it. Or the, the unit, not the charger, it's, it's the battery charging unit. Where are you? Around the back here. As I say, this is stuff that I do during the week finish projects off or or get a kick on with them. So that's that's it. Now this is a power board obviously. I'll move it along a little bit further so you can see what's happening. Uh, different chargers. Now this charger here is for all of my older DeWalt uh, 18 volt tools. They're still perfectly good. I've got a good lithium ion battery. This will do NICADs, nickel metal hydride and lithiums. Um, so I didn't want to get rid of it. This is a new style. This is for the X, uh, XR Li ions. This is for the steel. This is the uh, Ryobi uh, 18 plus one, I think they call them. And down the end, I've got a couple of Pro Tools, which are Festool chargers as well. Pro Tool and Festool, same company. And then right down the end, I've got the uh, charger for that little drill I was just using, the CXS. And it's great. Now, I didn't want cables rolled up and bunched and then tied up, because for two reasons, I didn't want the... Uh, I, di I didn't want the mess because all that kind of stuff's going to collect dust and it's going to be a nuisance. And I didn't want any coiling happening. Now they do say with a lot of things when you buy them, undo the lead fully before you plug it in and use it. Because you, it's basically a coil. You know, when you make electricity goes round, round, round really fast, it does things. You know, weird stuff. We won't talk about it. <laughs> all right, so what I did, I drilled holes behind all of these, or just under them, and a large hole here, you can see just here, that I could get the plug for the power board through and down the back, and all of the rest of the cable from all of these guys has been pushed through the different holes and then pulled out and used the clip on the back. And I'll show you what I did. It's because we have the French cleat there, it's given me a cavity to be able to do that to the cables. So this area here, I've got 18 millimeters cavity. Now the other thing is make sure when you drill your holes, 
that they're not going to be where the other French clique is going. Let me push this along a little bit further. Where the, where the French cleat that you're going to put on the wall is going, because that would be a pain in the backside. <laughs> Beta, sitting out better than what I have in place now with a little change for hanging the drills and drivers. Yeah, so that works well. Now also, remember we created this lip down here on the base of the board where the, when I was doing this on the router table last week and the sound turned off. Oh, and I bought those black batteries. Thank you very much for whoever suggested get the, the black in, in a loops. Uh, I'm getting about three hours out of those. And the other ones, my white in loops, were probably nearly 10 years old. So they've done brilliantly. So anyway, at the bottom of this area, I have created a slot here for this guy, the power supply for the whole thing to connect into the power point below. So I did that by drilling a hole and then I used my Japanese saw to cut either side of the hole. So I've got a basically a rounded slotted hole that'll work, work fine. I went round and I did a little bit of planing on it. So you can see the top is nice and clean. That's double thickness. This is still glued only. I'm thinking I'm gonna put a couple of screws in here as well and use a screw that will not penetrate more than 36 millimeters, which is double 18, of course. Just to give it a little bit of sheer and it's like wearing a seat belt. <laughs> all right, all right. So my plan at the moment is to put a couple of holes there. How are we going? It's only half past, I got plenty of time. And don't forget, I got a little trick at the end that I'm gonna show you about this thing as well. But the main thing is to, this is just little cable clips or, you know, these little um, cable holders, just a very small nail in them that holds them in the way. So that's not going to annoy any of the electrical voltage. It's just going to leave it alone. Keeps it tidy. Nothing's going to fall down the back and get caught when I hang it up on the wall. Just easy. Um, all right. So I'll drill those holes in there now. I'll actually do it while it's this way around. It's going to make it easy. So we'll be securing from the back belt and, susp <laughs> and suspenders. I'm not going to do a heap um, one here. One here. Oh, the other thing is when you're drilling, don't put your hand behind what you're drilling because the drill might go through it a little bit. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors, Kiwi 007, smoke and mirrors. They're not too tiny. They're half inch diameter holes. 13 mil, basically, 13 millimeters. One more here. Gotcha. All right, now as I said, I don't want to go through too far. These will do perfect. These are around, these are 30 millimeter screws. That's exactly right. You only do it once. I'll set the clutch to around about eight. Let's see how it goes. Well, I think we need to go a bit deeper than that. We can't have anything proud. It's gotta be all the way inside. So back it out and then go again. I've set the clutch to 11 this time. Yeah, not good enough. I'm going to go full strength. Back it up first. Now in. Gotcha. There's no fear of these pushing further through and coming out the other side because, as I say, they're 30. This is 36. I've still got a quarter of an inch, six millimeters on the other side. Gotcha. Where did I put the rest? I didn't get the rest of them. Okay, two more. Yeah, they've got to go in all the way. Can't, can't have anything like this because it's going to hold the whole thing proud. Gotcha. 
All right. Moment of truth. And we'll switch the cameras over to the other side there. Have a quick drink again. And remember Patreon, if you want to support me, keep me doing this kind of stuff, become a patron. Links in the description box. Um, Two Rivers Workshop just came on board with a dollar patronage to me, which is fantastic. Thank you very much. All right, other camera, other camera, other camera. And we'll put the camera, I should have done that before I picked it up, shouldn't I? There, I'm gonna wheel this out of the way and I'll wheel this one back this way. How good is it having all of these on wheels? So I can get in there without any dramas. I'll unplug this one, hook it over there for the moment, and I think it's only going to go to this area here anyway. Uh, and I've got one more thing to do when it's up there, but I so said when it's up there, we'll do that. I have to make sure that that cable is going down through there. There we go. Lovely. Let's see what happens. Well, I'm impressed. I like that a lot. Bring this camera back over here now. And that doesn't look too bad. It's missing everything down here. It feels solid. I'm down a little bit on the top. As I say, I always have this issue with French cleats. And I'll, one day I'll work out how to do it properly. Now, you might notice over here, these batteries are designed to go in this way and pull up. Well, that's the way I've put them in. So let's, let's get a battery or two wherever I've put them. Here they are. And so we'll start with the steel because it's a monster. Now, to take this battery out, I have to lift it. So I've put this stop across the top of the, the support and I've done it here. I'm going to do it to the Festal ones as well because they're kind of in that area going up and down. I'll grab, I've got a piece of the offcut from when I did the French cleat. So it's 45 degrees and it's going to go over there. So I'll just cut this to length like my micrometer style measuring. I'm going to dock this off on the capex. Give me a sec. All right. I think about there is going to be fine. I need to possibly do it like so. That'll work. Is there a way of doing that, David, without seeing all of that plywood exposed? Not really, but that doesn't worry me. I'm seeing, I'm seeing edge of plywood here anyway, so there you go. We'll drill a couple of holes and put a couple of screws in there. Um, maybe three. Now, I don't want to keep drilling over the top of there because I don't want to fill the charges up with dust. So 
It leaves an interesting pattern. I can kind of understand how wood turners get turned on by what they do. Every time you bring a chisel to a lathe and a piece of timber, you're going through the grain it's going to create all these different patterns. Now, this obviously isn't wood turning, but have a look at what's happening with the pattern in the different laminations in the plywood. It's cute. All right, so that's going to go there. So we need to put a couple of screws in. Uh, screwdriver and screws. Now, of course, this is such a steep angle, it may move it and slide it around a little. That's fine. I like it. Beautiful. And the last one. Gotcha. There's no way that that's going to lift off there. The weight of the unit itself is going to counter any upward force. So it's not going to go anywhere. If it was a very small unit that I'd made for here and it was going to be subject to a bit of upward force, all I'd have to do is look for where I had a stud along the wall and drill a hole and put a longer screw straight the way through it to stop any lift. Or where the cleat is behind there, I could put a screw into that cleat through the face of the whole unit and that locks it in position, won't lift. It's the same kind of thing on TVs, you know those wall mounts that they've got for televisions. Sometimes they put a sliding uh, metal section that locks the, the, the TV so it can't get lifted off the mount, it locks it all in, same kind of thing. All right, I think we need to put some more batteries in there. Let's have a look what we've got. Um, there's the big DeWalt and the 18 volt lithium ion and a couple of Ryobis. And a couple of Festool. Um, let's throw this one in there. And I'll take the ones out of the track saw because they've had some power used out of them. How are we going for time? 22. I was going to do a little bit of sanding on it, but I thought, nah, couldn't be bothered. That's a bit slack of me, isn't it? There we go. All of them are on. And I reckon that looks really nice. Next thing is plug it in. Now this is the surprise. I'm going to lower the camera down just a little bit. You're going to have to put up with me moving this, this around a bit. So I've gone smart in the workshop. And so you might see under there, I have what's called a smart PowerPoint. Now these things don't cost a bomb and they work off my mobile phone. Let me see if I can swing this around a little bit better. Or I have Google in here as well on my phone, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so Google Assistant will turn these things on for me. Now up here is a red light at the moment. I don't know if you can see that. Bring it in closer. And down a bit more. I should have really set this tripod up to be a little uh, better with this part. Up that way. There we go. Now I've already told Google what I've called this. I've called this, <coughs> you can rename it in the app. I've called it battery charger. So you watch this, see that red, red light? Hey Google, turn on the battery charger. See that? It went blue. Hey Google, turn the battery charger off. All right, turning off the battery charger. Okay, now I'm going to plug, <laughs> plug this in. Ah, move that around the other side. Plug it in. 
All right, I'm gonna come back here and you can watch from here whilst I tell it and you can watch all of the lights come on. Hey Google, turn the battery charger on. Okay, this one is fully charged. This one's getting a charge. This one's getting a charge. These ones are charging. See, it says red and green. It means it's charging. Different stages of charge. This one here is charging. This one here is charging. This one here, fully charged. Now we've got more. I'm going to come over to this camera here now. Uh, this one. And I'll, I'll just don't. Bang. Ha! Oh uh, dear. Now, last week, a few people, Carl included, said that they use a timer on their chargers, set it to an hour, which is great. Um, so I can also do that with this. I haven't worked out how to tell Google to, uh, to do that, but the app that it comes with can do it. All right, I'm gonna close that, open this up. Come on. We'll go to the app and we're waiting. It says that it's turned on. So I'll come on, come in closer so you can see what's happening. All right, it's turned on. You can see that. Now I'm going to hit timer. Uh, and let's go to one hour. Actually, let's go to a minute and I, I can prove that it's that it works. Uh, oh, well, that, that is one minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's say, okay. Off after 59. Forget that. Forget that. Let's say cancel. Let's go here. Go to one minute. Okay. Fifty seven seconds. I could set this to an hour. You'll hear in the background. I'm going to come over here and spin this around so you can see when it happens. All the lights are flashing away. Click, 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 click. 34 seconds. Oh, I haven't moved the switch to over. There we go. 34 seconds. 25 seconds. Nineteen, eighteen. Countdown. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, turn off. <laughs> and I can override it but just by saying, hey Google, turn the battery charger on. All right, turning on the battery charger. It's amazing, isn't it? Wait for this one. Hey Google, turn the compressor on. Sure, turning on the air compressor. 
can hear it. I'll take you out with the sound so you can hear it. Now, the only downside of that is that if I'm right beside the compressor, Google can't hear me. So I can just say, hey, Google, turn the compressor off. Okay, turning off the air compressor. Done. It's another world. I'm sure so many people have been doing this for ages, but Country Hick Boy here has only just been discovering this stuff lately. That is absolutely fantastic. Now I've got two batteries that are already full. So I've got three batteries. One of the, one of the, I'll, I'll switch back over to the other one because I'm going to show you. Yes, yes, I can make it do it with the dust extractor. And I'm buying another one of these things. They're not expensive. These PowerPoints, these little things, in Australia, $17 a Kmart. Brilliant. And they've got all sorts of other things. You can have lights that turn on, um, infrared remote replacements. So I've got one down the end there. And not only can it turn the air conditioner on, it can turn the TV on, or anything else that's an infrared. My uh, room air filter in here, it can turn that on as well. As I said, I'm a country hick, but I tell you what, you tell, for, for, yep, well, I'm going to get to that stage, Carl. I don't have Alexa. I have the, the other one. I don't dare say her name while I'm here. Her name was... Well, it's, it's an inanimate electrical object. It's not a person, but they make you think that it's a person. <laughs> All right. Let's give that a try. Hey, Google, set the timer for... No, can't do that. Okay, for how long? One minute. Okay, so that's just a timer. That's just going to give me a little alarm. Let's try another one. Hey, Google, turn the battery charger off in one minute. Sorry, because of potential risk to safety, I can't schedule actions for devices configured as outlets. All right, let's try something else. Hey, Google, finish the battery charger in one minute. No, of course you don't. You're a computer program. And I'm a person. So I will work on that. But I can set it here, as I say. And I will do it. I'll set the app. Doesn't take me long. Uh, time. And we'll go to... There's the timer. <laughs> You've sold me. I'm going to grab a couple from Kmart. Dismiss that one. They're cheap. And it's so much fun. It is. Turn your electric blankets on in your bed. These PowerPoints. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not doing any rap for any company. It's just a lot of fun. All right. Let's go. I've set it to an hour. Let's go over to the other camera. And we'll see how the things are going. All right, this one's fully charged. So I can take it out. Going, going. This one's fully charged. I can take it out. This one's fully charged. Take it out. And let's load up the thing whilst we're here. It'll take the weight. I made sure when I designed it as well, I'll spin this around a little and so it's not wonky. When I designed it, I made sure that all of the batteries will slide under their relevant charger. Okay? And even with these ones, you can spin them around like I did just then and I'll go there. But 
it's always a nice idea that they'll fit. It just works nicely. And there's another Ryobi, another Festool. Festool, this one, how's he going? Bit more to go on that. Bit more to go on that. These, when they're normally, when they're empty, uh, take about an hour to charge. And they've got, it's got three bars on it already. So that's one of the good things about it. This one is three and a half bars. This one's two and a half bars. So good. So good. All right. Back over here. Okay. Um, cold morning, how are you? Okay, Peter, can you uh, get rid of that post for me, please? Have a quick look there. The soded whoever he is. Let me have a look through here. Uh, in New Ze Thank you. Thanks, Derek. In New Zealand, we would need to put a lip along the front to stop batteries falling off with earthquakes. Well, you can do that. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. Let me get to there. Um, we don't have that issue. And putting a lip on there is, is really, you know, take a couple of seconds. Uh, Monday meetup would work. I know of several people, particularly with Dwalt, where they've forgotten to turn them off and they've caught fire. That's why the timer. That's one of the things I picked up last week from Carl. He was saying that he uses that. When you're playing with a new toy, try, hey, turn the chase on for 60 minutes. See if that works. I could do. I could try that. Carl, thank you very much for that information. All right. I think we're just about done. We're coming up to the hour. I'm stoked. It's not a bad looking unit either. I think that's pretty nice. Uh, Cole was asking me whether I was going to paint it or not. I don't think I will. It looks nice how it is. Everything is just going so well. Sorry, I'm, I get caught up. I, I haven't seen it in, in action on the wall. And uh, when you finish doing something, a project, don't you stand back and have a bit of a look at it and, it, and admire it if it's turned out well. You know, if it hasn't turned out well, then you just try and hide it. But uh, that's come up really well. I'm very, very happy with that. And I've also got a bit more French cleat along the wall there for if I get more bloody battery charges, because this happens. When I built the clamp rack, people said to me, make sure you got room to go further along, more clamps. I thought, I'll never get more clamps. But man, oh man, the clamps just jump into my car like you wouldn't believe. All right, so next week on the show, what we're going to do is we're going to install one of these. So this is an auto blast gate from Auto Blast Gates. And it's a four inch. And this one is going to go over my table saw and my router table. And it's a tricky thing to do, but I've worked it out. And we'll do the full installation next week on the show. It won't take more than an hour. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Shouldn't take more than an hour. Uh, but this, this is going to... I mean, I'll go through all the details on it next week. So if you're interested in that at all, come and have a look. If you're not interested, but you're curious, well then, yeah, watch as well. Why not? And I'll report on how uh, Google's doing and uh, how that battery charge is going. I love it. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I shall see everyone next week. Look after yourself. Be nice to each other. See you next week. No Patreon meeting this afternoon. But if you want to be a patron, jump in and do it. Thanks so much. See you later.